Welcome back. I didn't actually check my audio settings, so hopefully these are the correct audio settings and we'll just roll with it anyway. I'm one week behind myself, but it's fine. I am trying something different, so hopefully you can't hear the music that I'm listening to. Um, sometimes recording videos on your own, um, it can feel like dead air. You press record, you then stop, you press record again to record a second take. Now, typically do these in one take and that's it. So if I make a mistake, if I pause, if I am, I don't edit any of it out. Um, I don't change any of it. So it's a one take and that's it. And um, sometimes that's a bit dry and you want a little bit of hustle and bustle. So playing a little bit of music in the background, whether or not that's lo-fi music or whatever, can probably just like fill in that space just to give you a little bit of a relaxed vibe. I think fascinatingly having the music play in the background is kind of relaxing me a little bit more as well rather than I'm just focused on hearing my own voice narrate to a to to you guys watching or a, or a camera lens as it were um last week or maybe the week before I had a meeting with two guys uh two business guys that are running a, a an app or, a, or wanting to do a startup alongside of their like primary business um and in some of the conversations, um, like two conclusions happened. So one, one, I felt like when I shared what I was working on and what we were doing and um, what my plan was, I felt that like two conclusions were, um, one, don't worry about the money and two, go all in on something. Now at the time, like there was no room to logically explain what that was. So what it is, is the product that we're working on insider, which is a, a Spotify meets Patreon product, like platform streaming app. And to say, go all in on it and focus every effort on one thing is difficult because if you were going to do that, that would mean that basically I would not have any income from, um, my ventures, my business side, because I would stop doing the business side, which would be contract and projects. And I would move over to do full-time product. So that means my employees now are going to have zero income and I don't know when the first month of income is going to necessarily come in. So that's pressure. And I have outgoings, I have bills to pay. So my own, my, my own stability is put up to question. So I'm fine with challenging myself. Um, why do I feel uh, that that's a, a, an easy it's an easy statement to say for somebody when they've got it sorted so one thing is reflecting on when you're giving advice i think it's important to just understand uh the context of the person and how that might may may trigger them and the second thing is um i would love to quit but there's responsibility and there's also fear so i'm feeling this fear uh it's not happening so can i in a um relaxed environment play with that fear and identify why do i fear fear it of quitting everything and doing this thing so i can break it down to one be able to identify what are the actual um realities of 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 those fears um and then come up with some solutions so for example i if i did quit everything i f i would feel like i um i would feel that i've disappointed my brother um tom because he works for me and I would feel like I disappoint would have disappointed my wife because again, I'm living with her, not being able to pay rent. We'd have to move out of the place that we're living. So the whole, okay, my fear ultimately is disappointing people close to me. And that's the, the only reason why I'm not doing it. And then the, the second part to that is what would it look like? How could you do it? So yes, you know, you want to move in that direction. So you've identified that that is the one thing you want to do, which is go all, all in on this product insider. So how do you actually do that um, in a realistic way that doesn't trigger this fear of disappointing people um, that are relying on you? Um, and I think I've started to think, well, funding is a natural next step. So there's three different um ways to to that one is grants grants i would describe that as something that you wouldn't have to pay back grants typically come from um charity organizations or government organizations um 
Uh, and with that, we have started trying to access some grant funding. And that typically is going to be smaller amounts uh, and much more project based probably engagement. So we've started those conversations and there's been some promising leeway there. The second part is equity. So you would sell a part of your company. So think of it like as a piece of a cake. Uh, you would sell a piece of that cake for an amount of money. Depending on the piece of that cake for the amount of money, you would then be able to work out the entire price of the cake um, based on the piece, uh, which is basically the, the valuation of the company. And obviously it's very difficult when you're starting out because there is no necessarily valuation of such because you can't base it on any facts of revenue income um, and do like the 12 times multiplier or whatever industry multiplier you would use on monthly revenue times multiplier. Um, so you have to base it on the opportunity um, or how easy you're currently getting customers, your acquisition cost. Um, then you could scale it up. Okay, well, if it costs, you know, one pound to get one customer um, and a customer is 10 pounds, then uh, or gives in revenue of 10 pounds, the net profit of that is nine pounds. So then you can figure out when you're going to get your million pounds back <laughs> um, or like how much ad revenue you'd have to spend to get your um, nine pounds back on every user. Uh, and then the third one is um, loans. So that'd be a typical bank loan type approach where there'd be some sort of funding um, bank mechanism um, or organization company uh, that would be able to give you a, an amount of money for a percentage for a fixed period of time. Let's say it's 10 years, you would uh, borrow 500K, million pounds. And then they would say that it's a 6% interest that you pay back. Um, and they would be that you'd have to pay back all the amount in the 10 year term as it were so one it's new territory because i've never gone for uh, i've never gone for funding because i've always been able to fund things in a, like a fund things by revenue and typically that is a the best way to do it and they frame that as bootstrapping so start with little and and fund things based on revenue but when you want to go uh, and do something at, at a huge scale it, it might be that you want um very quick growth um so Funding in a in a conventional way, either in the grants, equity, or loan, is a little bit um, a little bit more appropriate for that way. Especially if you want to make it your your main um, main source of income going forward as well um, as a project itself. So, in having this initial easy for you to say moment, <laughs> and be like, I would if I could. I wanted to like address and and really engage with that. Um, frustration of, of like what the actual emotion the deep motion is basically i'm fearful of doing exactly that because it could pull down the whole tower of cards so analyze what are the actual emotions that i'm scared of i'm basically scared of disappointing people and disappointing cl people close to me that are important to me and then rather than thinking okay the big leap of quitting everything tomorrow is not the right thing but it doesn't mean the goal can't be achieved which is doing full-time product it would be that you come up with smaller steps to get there. So right now, if I work evenings and weekends doing X, Y, Z, or it didn't take us too long to put a pitch deck together, which is a summary of the product, the features, the tools, the market, um, the opportunity, the business model, get that together, start sending it out. So for the last week, um, we've started doing that in a way to build then that is the bridge uh, to um, allow me to potentially port over to, to doing that type of engagement. Um, so if there are, um, like, we, as you've kind of heard from me before talking about, you know, getting outside of your comfort zone, are you settling and, and challenging and, and analyzing? It's important to kind of keep yourself on edge um, when you're, when you can, uh, when, when there's space to, rather than put yourself on edge when it's a high stakes environment. Um, if I was stressed, you know, quitting or the idea of quitting might be too much for me to even comprehend or think so i'd be like no i don't want to think about it now i'm gonna it'll be a future dance problem so in a relaxed environment trying to plan and experience and feel that fear to then engage with it break it down and then look for options and um, different um, mechanisms to achieve basically the same goal is what i'm trying to do more of um it happens to be um, our eight-year dating anniversary and um, it feels that we've done a lot, but it also feels like I've not done a lot. And it, one, it could be because I'm, I'm really, really driven in the sense of um, it doesn't matter what you have achieved. It's about what you still need to achieve, which I need to be careful with. 
Um, but I'm again using it when you're looking back and reflecting, okay, this is what happened in eight years. And again, have we taken leaps uh, and done stuff when we have felt an aspect of fear or, oh, I'm not sure how this is going to work out. And then you do it anyway. Um, could we maximize that and, and do those leaps that we did in eight into four or into the next situation or into two years and try to continually um, kind of push ourselves. It's very similar to how the, um, uh, the All Blacks and the New Zealand rugby team, uh, they used to uh, keep players on edge and keep them in a stress environment. So then when, on the, when they're in the pit, when they're on the pitch, um, and a stress environment happens, they'll have absolute clarity. So one way that they would trigger stress is say, hey, tomorrow you're doing a, a talk on you know, defense or, or something. And then when they do the talk on defense, they would, in the moment that they're doing the talk, throw a curveball at them by literally throwing rugby balls at them or something would go wrong or they would be asking challenging questions or like put them on their back foot in a, in a high stress um, moment uh, to kind of get used to a... Um, a level of, of stress and, and then the management of that becomes easier, especially when you're on the pitch and something goes wrong and you're down 10 points, 20 points, however it is like the clarity to then come and, and get back onto the, into the game and, and, and play and, and win. Um, so I've tried to just use this as an example. And then the more I've thought about it, the more achievable the idea itself has become because the reality of the solutions are solidified. So we're doing a lot of, um, like speaking to people and, and asking them questions and, and and stuff to kind of information gather on the right step to do. And that brings the clarity that you need. So you've gone from, how dare you, <laughs> easy for you to say, all the way through to, oh, it's because I basically fear disappointing people. Okay, what are the small steps or what are the alternative routes to still achieve the same goal? And what does that look like? And then start breaking those down into, oh, okay, so it's these models, right? Let's start having those conversations now and not make the big decision. So then there's less of a, I quit now and cool, financing has to happen. I'm not doing that. I'm trying to create in this uh, slow um, kind of increase or slow um, incline as it were. Um, so yeah, I'd encourage you, if there's something that um, that you've kind of thought about that's challenging that, you, that you're that you afraid of, like figure out why you're afraid of it. Um, why do you feel fear around something? Are you, are you pushing yourself into states of fear and uncertainty um, to kind of keep your uh, keep yourself on your toes and keep yourself nimble and and basically avoid settling or having a, an aspect of mediocre mediocrity. That's a hard one. Um, and 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 then kind of like breaking those fears down to the real crux of it and and converse those things, like talk about those things, to be able to verbalize out loud those stuff rather than it all being just in your mind palace. And then start to figure out solutions. Now, of course, this is all done in a nice. 30 second hey do a b and c it's obviously a, a process it takes time so it's okay if it takes um you know a couple of weeks um it, it's the most important thing is um drive drive to a decision it doesn't m matter necessarily all the time if it's the right decision it, it's more so the the decision of of making a decision to move in a particular direction um so yeah be encouraged it's fine to feel fear um or be worried about disappointing people en engage with it uh wrestle with that and find solutions so while i've been enjoying listening to background music to make it a little bit easier to record a, a monologue um i hope to see you next week maybe i'll record two this week in in um because i missed last week uh all i'm wanting to do is keep up with the the discipline um of doing it and the execution of uh, one every week um and it's nice to look back at these videos and remember what I was um, struggling with, what I was going through, what I was thinking at the time. Um, I think typically um, looking back at year zero and how far I've come is a, is a massive encouragement rather than the fact that, um, you know, new, new challenges will always come. Uh, but being able to look back um, a year or two years will be like really, really interesting. So this is a video, yes, for now. But actually, it's for my future self to come back and watch this stuff um, and be encouraged that, yeah, you were thinking this now and, and where you are today in, in watching this as my future self. It reminds me, um, I'll just final closing thought, it reminds me of someone that used to record like five-year, 10-year predictions and scheduled them to be released in five years' time. 
so then they would um, do a, a review of that five-year um, prediction video um, alongside of it. And I, I can't quite remember who that was, which YouTuber that was. Um, I'm not sure if it was Mr. Beast. Yeah, maybe it was Mr. Beast. Um, but I think that would be something that I, I want to get more so into, like I've thought about before, visualizing and, and dreaming. I want to get more into prediction and, and declaring stuff and, and picturing things and try and put them down into videos because it's it's super fascinating. It's kind of like the modern day um, memory capsule stuff that, you know, put a bunch of stuff in a tin can and bury it. Um, so that's kind of like the modern day version of it. So until next time, shine bright like a Ryland.